you don't strike um, me as I'm, somebody I'm very, that's like a, afraid to I'm a speak pushover. up for yourself. I'm a really? pushover. Yeah. I have a really hard time saying no. Hence why I'm doing this interview. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That was a good one-liner. Probably the most memorable part of the day in Park City with Lindsey Vaughn was when she gives me a ride from her house to the Olympic Training Center. And it is safe to say he was not ready for that. All right, there's no way you drive this fast every day. So I might have told Lindsay to try and scare the shit out of Graham uh, with her car, and she did. Thank you, Seth. You guys see adrenaline going a little bit? Does it get yours or only mine, fearing for my life? Um, depends. She is literally driving probably 70 miles an hour in a 20 around these winding mountain roads. Uh, I have goosebumps right now thinking about this. Poor Graham, you could just tell the whole car ride he was holding on for dear life. I just remember how sweaty my hands were when this was going on, thinking like, you know, if I'm gonna die for the show, I don't want it to be doing this. I'm showing off a little okay. bit, but... I also I haven't really driven this car very much, so I don't really know what it'll do, but... So you're saying we should find out? Yeah, of course, why not? Lindsay put Graham to work at the Olympic Training Center, and he didn't stand a chance. I mean, have you seen her? Didn't end well. Okay, you're making me nervous now. Why? You're good, there's just like, metal equipment behind you, so I just don't want you to kill yourself, but that was good. Surprisingly enough, Lindsay's better at working out than Graham. This is like... <laughs> <laughs> I was working a camera for this particular shoot, and Graham is going through some of the training exercises, and on this one particular one, Lindsay pushes the button to make the thing go faster, and she stares right into my camera with a look I'll never forget. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to say mercy. Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Goal accomplished. So yet again, I made a fool of myself with Lindsay because I was trying to do anything athletically. I'm just looking like an idiot. I don't know why you're doing like half your foot over it, but that's an interesting technique. <laughs> First time I've seen that technique, it. but. When we did the interview, Lindsay had not been skiing since her career ended. It's a very painful topic for her. Ski racing is dead to me because I can never go back to it. I mean, you can still that's do it, same. but it, but because it's not at the competitive level. It's like, if you're a Formula One driver, is it gonna be really that fun to drive a Prius? No, you know what I mean? She relocated from Vail to Park City largely because she, you know, couldn't endure the, the, the memories anymore of being kind of laid up in her old Colorado home from all of her injuries. I would say it was the first year after retirement was hard. I was depressed and, you know, it was just, it was a really hard time. And skiing had been her life, and it was great to hear her then explain more about the impact she's making through her foundation. I had a girl, a young girl, who uh, cut herself. And um, after my camp, she stopped doing it. And, like, that made me so happy. And I was like, this is what I'm here for. I mean, you, you take a, a child that wants to kill herself, and I can help her. Sorry. What uh, about her story uh, resonated with you so much? I don't know. I mean, it's like, <laughs> what does a ski racer have to do with, you know, some kid who's underprivileged, you know, it just, I was like, that's how I can help people. The um, value and the positivity that Lindsay herself gained from that was, uh, really more than I would have ever expected. So I bought a bunch of land and this is like part of the property just goes up to the ridge line and you can see the whole valley in the Olympic Park. It's like the stairway to heaven. Something that I, I found amazing from our taping with Lindsay, because of the injuries that she's sustained during her career, she can at most only go on like a, a 10, 15 minute walk with her dogs before 
she has to stop. You think the knee will gradually get to a place where you can hike more? Probably not, unless I get a knee replacement. Okay. I'm bone on bone. A lot of the exercises you see her posting on social media are less to gain muscle and endurance and more just to be able to try and hope to comfortably get through everyday life. Tell us about Leo, he's a rescue. I got him when I was about to go into my second knee surgery before the 2014 Olympics. And the rescue shelter actually tried to convince me not to take him because he was so messed up. And I was actually on crutches at the time and I was like, if you didn't notice, I'm also messed up, so he's perfect. Lindsay showed us around her Utah acreage. It was beautiful. Now, being a Utah local, I knew the area was prime rattlesnake habitat. I just forgot to tell the crew that. We get introduced to the fact that there's poisonous snakes on the hike. Once the word snake got out, it's over. Panic, the crew could not get down fast enough. It was a stunning property, 24 acres, panoramic views in the mountains. What more could you want? I just like how quiet it is, you know? I can walk with the dogs and on my property and walk forever and they can run around and be happy and free and no one bothers me.